In this video, we'll see if you can actually count. We'll learn the sum rule, product rule, permutations, and complementary counting. So you might think that counting is for kindergartners, but it's actually a lot harder than you might think. So let's talk about ATMs and PIN codes. So every debit card has a PIN code associated with it, and you want to go to the ATM and withdraw money, and, but we're going to see how hard it actually is for a robber to guess that randomly. So, but first we'll count outfits. Let's say you have three shirts and four pairs of pants. How many outfits are possible if an outfit consists of either a top or a bottom, which would be inappropriate? Um, well, you might say, wow, it's just seven, right? You just add them, three plus four. So that's actually the sum rule of counting. So if an experiment can either end up being one of n outcomes or one of m outcomes where there's no overlap, then the number of possible outcomes of the experiment is n plus m. Now we'll try to count real outfits. So if a real outfit consists of both a top and a bottom, how many outfits are possible? So for the first shirt, we actually have four pairs of pants we can choose. Same for the second shirt, and same for the third. So by the sum rule, we can add these up and we'll have 12 different outfits. We could have also started with pants first. So for each of the four pairs of pants, there are three possible shirts, right? So now there would be also 12 possible outfits. Now let's add socks. Let's say we have two new pairs of socks here and here. Um, well, we start with uh, the 12 that we had, and for each of those 12 outfits, we can uh, choose two pairs of socks. So actually, there's 24 different outfits. So how do we count this with a slot method instead of drawing every single thing like I just did? Well, you can just say how many possible tops? There were three. How many possible bottoms? There were four. And how many possible socks? There were two. And so the number of total outfits is the product, which is 24. So the product rule says if an experiment has n1 outcomes for the first stage, n2 for the second stage, and nm for the nth stage, then the number of total outcomes of the experiment is just the product of all m numbers. So now we'll resume our discussion of ATMs, pin codes, and robbers. So how many possible four-digit pins are there? Well, there's 10 choices for the first digit and 10 choices for the second, and so on, and the third, and the fourth. So the number of possible four-digit pins is just 10 to the fourth, or 10,000. And uh, so there's a 1 in 10,000 chance that a robber can guess your pin code, which doesn't make me feel very safe. So now let's talk about stronger pins. Let's say you have a 10-digit pin code, and you must use each digit exactly once. How many such pins are there? Well, for the first digit, there's 10 choices. For the second digit, there's only 9, though, because you can't use the same digit as you did previously. And for the third digit, you can't use any of the first two, so there's only eight choices, and so on. And when you get down to the tenth digit, there's only one remaining, so um, there's only one choice. And so when you multiply this together, you get about 3.6 million. And this huge product from 10 down to 1 has a name. So the permutation is the number of orderings of n distinct objects. And it's read as n factorial, written n with an exclamation mark, and it's the product of n, n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way down to 1. So now let's do an even trickier pin. Uh, let's say each there has to be at least one digit repeated at least once. How many such pins will there be? So for example, all ones, or 0 to 8 with an extra 8, or 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, so on. So we go back to our slot method. There's 10 choices for the first digit. And then we're kind of dead for the second digit, because I don't know whether we're supposed to repeat that one or uh, repeat it later on. So this is kind of a dead end, I think. So we actually already did all the hard work, though. Let, let's see how many 10-digit pins there are in total. That's just 10 to the 10, right? You have 10 choices uh, for, for each of the 10 slots. But the number of 10-digit pins with no repeats is exactly what we computed earlier. That was 10 factorial. And so whatever is left is all the 10-digit pins with at least one repeat. So the answer must be 10 to the 10 minus 10 factorial. This is called complementary counting. So if u is a universal set, which is finite, and s is a subset of interest, and let u minus s denote the set difference, then if you want the size of s, you can actually take the whole universal set and subtract off what you don't want. So that is the complement of the subset of interest is also of interest. And so counting is definitely not for kindergartners.